this is Ibrox. I need to ask you about um, what happened the following year, Ian, um, in October 1988, um, when you uh, sustained the injury. Um, I don't know how much you want to say about it, to be perfectly honest with you, but no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, opening up the floor it, to you. It happened. Uh, I switched off for a, for a millisecond. And I, I paid the consequences. Now, the, the tackle that happened was a disgrace. Uh, no getting away from it. But the reason, I, the reason I, I switched off, because the referee blew for a free kick, and then I stopped. And then my last, my last recollection was just feeling a serum pain going through. It wasn't so much my knee, it was just the inside of my leg. And I just now... Then you think, now, you're, you're, I hadn't heard of the word cruciate then. Yeah. And uh, I just heard now, when I was in the dressing room, at the, the club doctor, Donald Cruikshank, who I now owe everything to, now he, in terms of now getting me back to again, and he came in, and before you know it, I was, I was drowsy. He gave me a morphine jack, and I just heard, I heard the word cruciate. As, as I'm sitting there, and, there's still a game of football going on and Terry Butcher's taking doors off hinges and <laughs> everything. <laughs> and it was, it, everything was an absolute blur, Scott, in terms of what happened. And now, it was October the 8th, 1988, and it was eight minutes past three again. Yeah, right to start the game. Right yeah. to start and the uh, game. And uh, just now, obviously, there was a few tackles flying about and everything, but I don't know. You'll never know because we've, we've never met up, but now, it was, there was no need for now the way I think now the way you challenged me. So it took, I mean, it, it took um, three years of your career completely from you. Um, I think from a, for a Rangers fan, I'm sure I speak on behalf of anyone who's watching and listening, it kind of took you away from us for three years as well. Um, that period of time must have been really tough um, for you to, to sort of get your head round, try and get a period of recovery back. There must have been a couple of maybe moments where you thought you were just about ready to go and then some of the other setback, yeah? No, oh, it's a million setbacks, Paul. Uh, in between the injury, I lost my dad. Uh, you know, they, they go on about you know, the depression things, I think. I, I, I was clinically depressed at one yeah. point because I'd, I'd, I'd had operations and it, that nothing seemed to go on. You know, it was like, one step and then three steps back. Uh, it wasn't until now America, Graham Soonis, and as I said now, the club doctor, Donald Cruikshank, sourced this surgeon in Los Angeles because it, they, all, the, all the, the surgery had in Great Britain, that, that was the best they could do and, and the, knee, the knee was still unstable. And, uh, and I went to America, uh, to Los Angeles and Sherman Oaks, the, 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 the surgical place, and this Dr. Blazima, and I was going over there thinking now if, just to see if, if he could do it for my knee. And it was the first time I'd heard a surgeon say, I'll get you back playing. And that gave me the, the biggest boost in the world. The day of my surgery, I got the, the, the phone call from Graham Soon. He said, we just clinched the title at Tannadice with Trevor Stephen. And I was lying there, uh, just had my operation and it gave me the greatest boost. No, now the, the, the doctor, now obviously the surgeon, had saying, I'll get you back playing. At what level, I don't know, but you'll get back playing soccer. He used to call it soccer in America. Yeah, of course. And that, gave me, that guy just gave me the biggest you know, biggest job ever. And obviously now the Rangers won the league now, set up now, just the quickest recovery time. All the other cut recoveries after injuries were slow and painful. But this one, you'll come back with a, a different focus. And then we, we'd sourced again now Lily Show. Yeah. But I, I said, I don't want to be in Glasgow. Now I've got myself into trouble now. As I said, now going about, one minute you're king of the castle, next minute now you're, you're nothing and you're, you're feeling sorry for yourself. Of course. So I went, I went down, to, down to Lily Show and spent nine months at Lily Show. And then I come back and that was me, you know, everything, everything was just good. I was about just under 10 stone at my fight, mate, everything. Uh, everything just shoot us up to here now. I, I was like, <laughs> as I said, I went, uh, well, I went. I'd, uh, I've run about in the shell and all of a sudden I've got, I've got muscles where I, I didn't think I could get. I, I was just everything, you name it. Everything, everything, bike going, swimming. It was like, it was like watching the old Rocky thing now, up and down beaches, up and down sand dunes now. And they, they mentally battered me to get yeah. back playing because they knew the side effects of being out for now like two and a half years could have you in terms of getting back. But as long as your mind, they didn't release you for all the show until they thought you were right in the head. I was never right in the head anyway, so how do I get away from all the show? I never know. And that, that was the way they went about their business. They were, I was fortunate. One, one of the two of the fizz was Grant Downey, yeah. who became the Fizzle Rangers, and Graham Smith. And they're, they're ex-army men. And uh, what they do, they, 
now they put demands on you. Now we we'd go out in the in the middle of forest and there's now six football players in a jock. <laughs> and you've got to carry it for three mile and, and and jockeys are no built ill built logs. But it's <laughs> it's it's now get you prepared. And we're used to sitting or oh, the wee jockey the wee jockey just used to sleep, they were knackered. But <laughs> it was great times and now as I said now we, when I was at Lilly Show, not not everybody left Lilly Show and got back playing again. Yeah. And there was some sad cases. And, uh, I, I don't know if you remember a boy Paul Lake at Man City. Man City, City, yeah, of course. You can check up. He, he was one of the Man City, and he was the most. He was the most sought after youngster at the time. Big, big Lake. He never made it. He never made it back. And I, he, he sent us a great letter the day I made my comeback against the reserves, and I got this letter. Now, and I just got a community I got at the time, and if it wasn't bad enough to. The butterflies, everything I was absolutely now. I'm telling you honestly, that's the most now. And it was a letter, and I read this letter, and I had to go into talk, I had a wee tear. And I just said, Well, I'm going to get back playing. That big guy never made it. And then when I made my first team come back against St Johnston, when I was lucky enough to score Big Lake, he was at the game that day. Excellent. And, uh, we've, we've stuck up a great relationship ever since then. But as I said, now for I was one of the lucky ones that get back playing again. And Big Paul never, now you never get the chance. So in that reserve game, um, at Ibrox, I'm not sure we've ever had a, um, an <laughs> attendance at Ibrox like that. And oh, I think it's safe, safe to say we'll never have anything like that again. I mean, the fans ultimately turned up to see you. They wanted to see you. It wasn't to look at anyone else but yourself. That must have been a no, huge no. boost in itself, was it not? It was, it was incredible. Honestly, they, they, they were saying, oh, there's, there's, uh, in the warm, you're going, oh, there's no bad wee crowd here today. <laughs> And we're in the dressing room, they're, filming, oh, they're going to have to open another couple of turnstiles. And then the game's going on 10, 15 minutes. And all you see is like thousands now around the side of the track. And I've got now the governor and you know, the Rangers end opened up. And it was just now you have to pinch yourself now because now you, the letters I had up until my comeback now, but I hope everything goes well or not now. You, there's thousands of letters and I couldn't reply to all of them, but it just it shows you now. Much a rapport I had with the fans, and it just now you're, you're a ten, there's things you'll remember in your life now. You've got to your kids, and now the, the occasional cup final or occasional goal, but I'll never forget that day against the Hibernian Reserves. Fire's raging, I'm shaking. You wanna go out? I wanna stay in. Why?